Hey, what's up YouTube? It's SR Arcade again. I'm back today to do a really quick part two to my Ferrari F355 challenge restoration project. And uh, as you can see, it's quite a mess in here. Lots going on. Doesn't look like I got a lot done, but I've spent a lot of time on it actually. And I've only had probably a few solid days to work on it, but it's been it's been hard work. So I'll just get right into what I've done. Uh, if you remember the uh, all the parts before, those were all really nasty and grimy. Well, I took all these off of here, dismounted all these little boards and all the wiring harness, cleaned it all, remounted it. So nice and neat there. And then the Naomi, of course, and the I.O. Real clean on here now, no more grime and dirt. So that was a big job. And this seat, this whole seat got pulled apart. So the, those these here, these are actually inserts. They're bolted in, they can come out. Same with this one. And you don't even want to know the kind of disgusting grime and smell I was treated to after taking this apart. It was pretty bad. And all underneath here, underneath this part where it all bolts in, there was like Coca-Cola rotted in there and ooh yeah, all kinds of tasty stuff. So really all that's left is this crevice. That's like the only dirt on this. I know it doesn't look like it's a huge improvement, but uh, what will happen is I'll buff this out with um, Novus. It'll look really shiny and clean. And uh, of course this will be covered with those seat backs as soon as I figure out how to fix those. Those are pretty bad. Gotta get creative because I'm definitely using those seat backs. Those are pretty awesome. So there's that. And then uh, moving on the steering wheel. This was all scratched with graffiti before. So I lightly sanded it out. It's no longer there. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to match this gloss black and then I'll lightly spray the top of this. And that should uh, fix that. Still got to pull all this apart, clean that. It's pretty bad. I'll need to be re-greased and just cleaned up. Not too bad. It's a short job. Now that's what I have to do for these pedals. I got these apart. I got the main junk and dust bunnies and all that stuff has all been pulled out of there. And now all I got to do is just pull these pots off, test them. Make sure everything's working in the spec, and then all these parts get re-greased in here so that these are going to be uh, able to move nice and smooth. And I'll polish all the nice shiny bits, get them nice and shiny again. And there's the seat handle there, and these are all parts of, uh, this is uh, all seat part, seat part, seat part. Pretty complicated little piece. And then, of course, the big bottom piece. So the story with this, gosh, this has been a beast. It has been so much work. Uh, I know I said I was going to do aircraft stripper. Couldn't get any. So I settled with, uh, I think, uh, what is it, a clean strip or whatever. This stuff. Yeah, clean strip. This is the premium sprayable stripper. You get this. Comes with a stripping little spray bottle. You squirt it on. Let it sit for 15 minutes and all the paint just kind of runs off and you basically get your paint scraper right here like and just scrape it off do that a whole bunch of times because every time you do it you get a little more and a little more and a little more and in the end you get a lot of paint but not all of it comes off and I made a very poor decision I got really upset and said yeah screw it I'm going to just use the wire wheel and I went after it took off some of the harder bits with that not a good idea at all I knew better, but I did it, and now I'm going to have imperfections in my paint. So don't use a wire wheel. Learn that lesson for you. I've already done that before in other projects, and I don't know why I did it. So after that, I was going to do like a car paint setup because I have all the stuff to do car painting. But uh, you know, car painting is a lot of uh, preparation. There's a lot of extra costs involved with setting up the sprayer and putting up your paint booth and. Just a lot of time I don't have. I'm already way behind on this project, so um, I just went ahead and uh, decided to go for the old rattle can uh, primer job. And I used this Rust-Oleum uh, self-fetching primer. And uh, here's the can. Okay, great product. About six bucks after tax. I used two cans to do all the parts you see that are painted. Uh, did about two coats. And then I sanded it with a 600 grit. I was very happy with the result. It was uniform, it was smooth, 
and I was very excited. And so I said, all right, I'm having pretty good success with uh, spray paint. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, just go ahead with the black like that as well. Maybe it'll be just as good. So I went with the um, Rust-Oleum uh, Painter's Touch Ultra Cover 2X Flat Black and was not so successful. In fact, I was very unsuccessful. It turned out to be one of the worst painting jobs I've ever had. It was, you know, it's such a big area. It's hard to hit it with like spray paint. So it became blotchy and uneven and it looked like spray paint. It looks like someone just went, psh, you know, it looked like crap. I was so unhappy and pissed off about it. I was like, I can't believe I waste this much time to make it look bad. So to save the day, I'm like, what am I gonna do with this thing? I don't know, it's screwed. I decided to say, what the heck, you know, I got some foam rollers. I paint all my cabinets like that. That's a foam rolling job. I mean, it comes out like laminate. It looks so good. Uh, these are probably one of the best little uh, tips. If you're into painting cabinets, I'll tell you, the foam rollers are awesome. So I use the little guys so I can get in the cracks and crevices and stuff. But basically, I foam rolled painted this whole thing here with a matte onyx black glidden paint. I think it's glidden. Yeah, nothing special. This is like the budget interior paint from Home Depot. Comes to about 10 bucks after tax. And uh, get a quart of that and you, could, you can paint a whole couple games with it. So I went for it with some I had left over. Was very, very impressed with the results. I, I started off with that little piece over there and I was so happy on how it dried. I was like, oh, it's smooth. It's not blotchy. You can't see any strokes. This is only two coats. This one too. I haven't sanded these yet. I'm going to get to that next. And then I did this. And this was going to get probably another coat or two. But I uh, discovered, you know, you can see here where this is, that's my skin coming off on the paint. It's really rough. So just like an auto body application, you got to wet sand it. So what I did is just got like a spray bottle with some water. And I'm just going like here's an area I'm still working on. That's why it's kind of blotchy. Just kind of spray a little bit. And then I got a thousand grit paper here. And with the thousand grit, I just kind of, you know, do my sanding job. And it's like magic. It's, it becomes so silky smooth from that rough nastiness that was taking my skin right off my hand. Now it's like, you can even feel it on here. You can feel it becoming smoother as you're going at it. And I, I know it looks real messy right now, right? But you know, you just squirt it a little more and get your rag and, you know, it cleans up, it gets clean. Uh-oh, you see that? That is what happens when you let your stripper sit in the sun too long. It actually burned and etched the metal and my paint has fallen into it. So what I'll do is I'm gonna end up uh, coating that over and uh, I'll use a lighter sanding paper. I'll just have to remember around this area. But some of these other spots came out pretty good actually. It's more of a gray than a black, isn't it? This was the spray paint. And this is the rolled on paint. Well, we'll see. It's pretty dark. It might look better when it's on the machine. <laughs> it looks like a gray from here. Um, all right, well, maybe we'll see the next video and have something better to support. <laughs> I'm happy with the finish. I'm happy of how this feels. Nice and smooth. Very thick. Just not happy with, it's not, flat black. I wanted it matte black. All right, last part. Here are the progress of the, um, this is where the seat goes. These are like the, the part that goes on top of this box. As you can see, these were that diamond plate mat before that was really disgusting. I replaced it with new mat. This is just basic mat you can get over at Home Depot in the flooring section. You can buy it by the foot. I chose the mat with the widest grooves in it so make it easy to clean. Because Daytona had really narrow grooves and it would get crammed full of dirt and it was such a mess and a pain to clean. This looks a lot easier and I'm pretty happy with how this went on. It went on pretty flat. There's some bumps like right there. That's because the mat's not perfectly flat. It's not because I didn't stretch it right. It's just not a flat mat. And then I got some aluminum pieces that have to fasten. They'll all go up and down these sides. But I'm going to do new hardware. I'm not going to use security bits. I'm going to just use like uh, Phillips or something. I'm going to go stainless just to make it easier and that's about it and then this is an original painted piece you can see the original color is a semi-gloss black that's not quite gloss 
I'm not going to paint this piece because it's in pretty good shape. And, but, uh, but that's it. But we're getting low on time here. i got 10 minutes, so I'm going to end the video. There's a painted piece that's just primed. That's some dirt there, but you can see that primer went on really nice. Really happy with the primer. The Rust-Oleum uh, self-etching primer. Good stuff, so I highly recommend that product. And then, of course, the the foam rollers. Awesome product. They do, they do good work on the machines, too. All right, well, that's it. I'm about out of time for today. So I'll be sure to make another video soon, and hopefully the next time I have a video, that's going to have some laminate on it. And it's going to be the new wood and this will all be set up again. Hopefully player one will be, be close to being done after the next video. So uh, stay tuned and uh, I'll be sure to give you an update. See you later.